Now let's see how a firm gets to its equilibrium operating under a perfect competition. How does a firm derive its equilibrium? What are the conditions which are necessary for its equilibrium? So there are two conditions for it. First, MC should be equal to MR or MR should be equal to MC. It's the same. That means marginal revenue should be equal to marginal cost at that time. That means both the curves should be intersecting each other and the point at which they intersect would be the point of equilibrium. So the first order condition is marginal revenue should be equal to marginal cost. Now let's take a look at the graphs which are presented in this slide. We are well versed with the first graph wherein the price is getting set in the market by the forces of demand and supply. The price set in the market is P. So this is the price which has to be accepted by the seller or the firm. So it accepts this price, but we know that this is price as well as the demand and it is also the AR and MR curve for the firm. We've also studied how a marginal cost curve looks in our earlier chapter. The marginal cost curve is generally U-shaped. So this is my MC curve and what is my MR curve? This is my MR curve. We've already derived this in the earlier slide. So the point where MR and MC are equal. Can you tell me the points where MR and MC would be equal? Yes, there are two points. First is the point A. Second is the point B. We can see that both these curves are meeting at two points A and B. So at both points, I can say MR is equal to MC. So this is the first order condition for equilibrium. What is the second order condition? MC curve should cut the MR curve from below or the MC curve should be positive. The second order condition is the MC curve should cut the MR curve from below. Now let's consider point A. Is the marginal cost curve cutting the marginal revenue curve from below or is it cutting it from above? You can see at point A the marginal cost curve starts from here and meets the point and meets the MR curve at point A. It starts from above so it cuts the MR curve from above. It's not cutting the MR curve from below. What's the case with point B? Is the MC curve cutting the MR curve from below? Yes, it is cutting the MC curve, I mean the MR curve from below. You can see the flow of the curve in this fashion. It starts from here and goes in this direction, in this direction, in this direction and finally ends here. So when it is starting from here, it is going like this and finally when it reaches B, it is cutting it from below. The curve is reaching MR when it is below the MR. So I can say that MC curve is cutting the MR curve from below. So my equilibrium point would be point B where both the conditions are getting satisfied. 
else I would have had two equilibrium quantities. Equilibrium quantities would have been OQ1 or OQ2. But now I know that at point B, both the conditions are getting satisfied. So the equilibrium point would be B and the equilibrium quantity would be OQ2. Now we know how the equilibrium is set for the firm. But what do you mean by equilibrium? Equilibrium means how much should the firm produce? What is the amount of quantity that the firm should produce? And what is the revenue that it will get and what is the cost at that point that it is incurring? So we said the equilibrium should be where the firm will be getting marginal revenue equal to its marginal cost that is the revenue that it gets from selling the extra unit should be equal to the cost that it will incur on selling the extra unit. So let's say the firm is selling 100 units. Now should the firm sell 101st unit, should it produce 101st unit? The answer is simple. If the marginal revenue that is the sale or the turnover or the price of the product that it is going to sell that is 101st unit is more than the cost that it is going to incur it should go ahead. But if the revenue from that product is less than the cost that is incurring it should not produce. And if the revenue is equal to the cost, it should stop at that unit. So the firm should stop where, where the first order condition gets satisfied. That is where MR equals to MC. The revenue that you are going to derive from the next product or the next unit should be equal to the cost of the next unit. Now, in case you have more than one points wherein MC is equal to MR, the second condition comes handy in this case. The second condition is MC should be cutting MR from below. So, the point where MC is cutting MR from below becomes your equilibrium quantity. And this is the amount of quantity that you should produce. If you produce more than this, you are going to incur losses because for every unit now your cost will be more than revenue because the cost is rising now. You can see that the marginal cost curve is going up. So if you produce beyond OQ2 you will be incurring loss on every product and if you produce or sell less than OQ2 there will be a loss of revenue that you will be incurring. You could have sold OQ2 at this price, but if you are selling less than OQ2, then you will incur a loss that you could have earned. It would not be a loss that I would say, it would be a loss of revenue. That's the better word for it. So the firm should produce and sell how much OQ2 and this would be the equilibrium quantity for the firm.